live from Washington, D.C., it's theCUBE, covering Boomi World 19. Brought to you by Boomi. Welcome to theCUBE, Lisa Martin with John Furrier. We are in Washington, D.C. at Boomi 19. This is our second day of coverage, and John and I are very excited to welcome one of Boomi's customers. We have Olive Perrins, head of in-home experience at Sky Olive. It's Hi. great to have you here. It's lovely to be here. It's a fantastic event. It is, we saw you on stage yesterday, so we're very pleased to have you uh, join us on theCUBE. So I think a lot of folks know about Sky. Everybody, I shouldn't say everybody on the planet, but most of <laughs> us have an ISP, we have cable services, so the, uh, we're all customers of Sky or some of Sky's uh, peers Parents. across the globe, so we all kind of understand that. You guys have built something very cool with Boomi, the Future Assurance View Tool. And when you talked, when you showed this, me this before we went live, I thought, oh, bring that to the US. <laughs> because whenever there is a problem with our internet, I mean, people, we just stop, right? Yeah. So talk to us about what Sky has built with Boomi and some of the great things that it is enabling. Sure, so I think we always had amazing diagnostic information and we had lots of data. What we never did was connected that and did data-driven decisioning. So for us, um, Boomi was there to connect all of the sources together with the over six million routers out in the field and live on demand for a customer, check everything, all of the uh, telemetry data from their hubs, from their their line and make sure that line is connected, it's fast enough, it compares well to their neighbors, it's stable, it's not retraining, it's as good as the line can be and the Wi-Fi to every device in the home is good. If not, it simply decides which engineer needs to fix this and dispatches the job. And you started this initially in a reactive mode to right. start, okay, there's faults here. Talk to us about that migration or that, we'll say transformation since we're here. That yeah. transformation from reactive to proactive and then unveiling what you guys are doing with predictive. Yeah, so I think when we started, we set ourselves this big aim of getting to 69% digital first. We were round about 25% before we launched, and to be honest, most of that 25%, it was to find the telephone number in digital rather than do anything. Um, we're now at 87%, and as you can imagine, the amount of data logs that creates off about 300,000 customers a week running the tool has now led us to know, well, which outcome is most reliable and really optimize our decisions. So then we started to think, okay, well, it's great that we're fixing these issues, but we probably have a lot of customers in pain who we're not getting to because they're not calling us or visiting the tool. Why don't we go proactive and then go predictive? Find who's going to be faulty tomorrow and intervene before it happens. So we've taken all of the intelligence in Boomi and codified it into an algorithm. And every night it runs and predicts who'll be healthy or unhealthy uh, signal tomorrow. And then um, anyone who needs an engineer, we dispatch it and it just fixes it free of charge before the customer even knows it's broken. And was this, I, I just envisioning of the recent issues I've had with yeah. ISPs, I'm like, I, I need this. Was this driven by, you said in, initially just a couple of years ago, only a Two quarter years ago of your launched, yeah. customers were, only a quarter of them were, were starting their search digitally and now yeah. it's up to 87% in just a two year period. Correct. What you've done to be to go from reactive to proactive to predictive, was that driven by customer demand saying we want, I, I don't even want to have to call in, I want to be able to get to you from any channel, or was it more driven by you guys suddenly having a massive increase in data and saying we've got a lot more information, if we can connect it together and unlock the value, the services we deliver can become predictive. I think it was a blend of both, truthfully. So once you, ultimately master the cost per consumer. You've got a really good data model that says, given this fault, then send this engineer and we know it will fix it and they'll be help 
happy. I think at that point you start to say, well, where are the other costs to the business? And ultimately that comes from yeah. churn and attracting new customers. So it just feels right to spend more upfront on engineers to save churn later and keep a really healthy and happy base. You know, one of the great things about in-home experience is obviously Wi-Fi, because it goes down, we have run yeah. screens, calls. So the operational side to totally get the efficiencies and the savings probably that comes with that. But people are working at home more, you're seeing virtual, so there's a real need for reliability at home, but also brings up the data and the security questions, because now you got yes. Wi-Fi light bulbs, you got everything's Wi-Fi, so you know the in-home experience now has people maybe working at home. Yeah. Uh, home and pleasure, security, malware, all these things are cutting edge data problems. How do you guys view that? What's uh, What's the internal thinking around how to protect the home and so I guess the first thing that we needed to be really clear on is traditionally um, in an ISP world, you were risk averse and you said our demarcation is where the line enters the home. That's no longer acceptable in today's age. Every time Facebook goes down, our help contacts increase by 30%. So we know that our demarcation isn't the device, it's not the application on the device, it's the consumer themselves. Exactly. It's their understanding. And as an ISP, it's our job to educate, support and handhold. So everything that we can do to make our hub smart enough that they're plug and play, and everything that we can do to predict what customers need in IoT and in security and build that in at source, it's the right thing to do. You'll have yeah. healthier, happier customers in the long and term. And parents also want to turn the Wi-Fi off when the kids aren't doing their homework. You know, these policy kind of user experience things are, are kind yeah. of, I mean, as an example, as we have kids, but you know. We've just launched a remote control for the internet, so you can control what your kids have access to anywhere, in or out of the home on any device. And you guys have just in this last couple of years where mostly it's been going from reactive to predictive. proactive. You said predictive was launched recently. Yeah. But even in that two years, your NPS net promoter score has gone up 20%. So can it you has. imagine in the next year or probably less the impact that you're going to have because customers are getting what they want. And they probably, some of them don't even know it if they don't know they have a problem. Exactly. But Sky has identified it. I can only imagine that the churn numbers will go down and the NPS will even continue to rise. Exactly. And that's precisely what this is about. It's the happier the base is, the more stable. In the end, you're going to spend more on engineers and less on churn. That is the perfect balance. It really is. And in terms of spend, let's talk about the cost savings. Dramatic cost yes. savings. The first year alone, you saved six million, six million pounds. pounds. And the second year? Six million pounds, and on track for similar this year. That's, that's transformative to the business. It absolutely is, yeah. Um, I think what it has allowed us to do is um, really knuckle down to what should our budget be and get stability around that. So now we've given the business some controls and dials and they know what they can pull to control costs. What's next? What are you guys working on next? Obviously that's good return, you're reinvesting, there's more data, there's more things to do. You got remote control internet. Um, what are other things you guys looking at operationally to get into, to innovate on? So I think there's um, a real need for speed. For us it's about investing in fiber. Uh, we're putting all of our customers on a high fiber diet right now. <laughs> um, so it's dark fiber, faster fiber, one gig connections. And then on the Wi-Fi side it's giving guarantees so it's no longer acceptable yeah. to have a router squirting out Wi-Fi. What we're now doing is guaranteeing you will have Wi-Fi of the best quality anywhere in your home to support any device. And we're putting our money where our mouth is and sending Wi-Fi heat mapping engineers with pods to yeah. get your house up and sorted right first time. Beyond that, I think it's very much going into the world of IoT, smart sensors, um, cameras, yeah. and with that, of course, data, it means um, IP storage, backup yeah. for uh, your cameras. You know, one of the interesting trends we've been covering is automation. Um, you're seeing RPA, for instance, a hot sector, observability on the data side, so this cloud is, but you mentioned the DMARC has changed to the, uh, to the user, so you got wearables, I mean, if you got gamers in the house, they're going to look at ping times, the kids know what ping times are, so you, know, you have all the speed issues, so what's that going to look like for you guys as you think about more speed, mm -hmm. more data, more people wanting custom yeah. services. Is there automation involved? I mean, where, do, where do you guys see the automation low-hanging fruit and where's the vision go? So, 
For, for me, it's not necessarily about automation, it's about personalization. We already have that data. We already use that data. Is it relevant to every customer? I'm sure my mum wouldn't want to know about Ping. She wants to know if it's broken. <laughs> um, so I think for us, it's matching what's your intent and have we serviced that in an outcome? And right now, that's exactly where we're going with conversational AI and then really starting to consider, have we, have we achieved your goal? Um, RPA has a place, but I think right now it's less about the generic quality of service and more about targeting your individual consumer needs in the home. I love that personalization angle because I think we, sometimes in this digital age, the personalization is lost. Sometimes we yep. do that of our own if we're going you know, on a DoorDash or something to, instead of going to a restaurant. We want, mm -hmm. I think we want a mix of both. But that personalization where something like Wi-Fi comes into play, like you were saying, yep. when Facebook goes down, 38% spike in people calling going, hey, there's a problem here, whether or not it's Sky's problem Indeed. or not. So when we look at this demand for personalization, people's levels of frustration with there is an issue, you guys have resolved that obviously, but in terms of what Boomi and Accenture announced yesterday with conversational AI, yes. really, really exciting stuff there, you guys, said, you and I were chatting before we went mm -hmm. live, that there was a purposeful decision at Sky to not start this digital transformation yeah. with AI. Now you're ready to, to take this on. Tell us about that decision and how you're now is really have the foundation with which to actually do it conversationally and make it personal. Yeah, and I think so much time goes into training bots and um, I really think that it needs to be authentic. You don't need to feel like you're talking to a human. It's okay that you know you're talking to a virtual machine, but that first interaction needs to be meaningful and helpful or you'll quickly stop um, engaging with it. So I think for us it was about define what does good quality look like? What might be the things that go wrong with broadband? Ultimately it really is only slow not working at all or dropping lots outside the home or inside the home. And really it's about saying what, does, what might be the problems we know about? Eliminate those and there's only a finite number of alternative problems left that we can really start to train a model on our learnings to date. So I think having excluded all of the weird, wonderful um, edge cases and dispatches, there's less there to worry about, but it's higher value for the consumer. And I think on the personalization angle, the key for us is understanding, are you tech avoidant? Are you tech savvy? Where are you on that scale? And which channel should we serve you up those steps in and how complicated or hand-holding should those steps be? And I think that's for us where conversational AI comes in. It's, it's personalization, the number of steps, the type of steps and the channel that it's best served in. There is no point having Siri guide you through really complicated hands and knees wiring stuff. That's best done with some images sent through WhatsApp, for example. So you guys will have the, the data to be able to determine, not just maybe knowing why is this person calling in or why are they engaging with a chat bot, but to understand what's that person's preferred method of communication. There's that whole consumerization yeah. effect and that demand from the consumer of like, you know, your and mom and my mom would want to exactly would, yes. would have different levels. So you're going to have enough of that quality data to really deliver the personalized experience way beyond knowing what boxes I have installed, what routers I have, what version, but also my level of technology understanding. That's exactly cool. that. Exactly that. That's the that's the destination for this year. Absolutely. Well, sign me up. <laughs> Bring this over to the US. And before we go, I want to note that that Sky and Del Boomi together, your design won the Best Enterprise Project at the UK National Technology Awards it recently. Did. It did. Congratulations. What an honor. Thank you. It was a great night. Exactly. Well, Olive, it's been great having you on theCUBE, sharing with Thank us what you. Sky is doing to really deliver a personalized experience going from reactive to proactive to predictive. Awesome exactly. stuff. Thank you. Thank you. Pleasure. Ours too. For John Furrier, I'm Lisa Martin, and you're watching theCUBE from Booming World 19. Oh.